Welcome back to Ms. Bell's classroom. In today's lesson, we are going to focus on the 1920s United States history. Make sure that you enroll in my class by clicking the subscribe button. And if you hear any noises, it is raining outside and I know that that helps me fall asleep. So I hope that you can rest and relax and enjoy today's lesson about the 1920s. So, the 1920s are most famous for being the Roaring Twenties. Who has heard of the term the Roaring Twenties? Okay, great. The Roaring Twenties is a nickname for the 1920s in the United States. It was a time of hope, prosperity, and cultural change. With the economy and the stock market booming, people were spending money on entertainment and consumer goods. Advances in industry allowed the average person to buy goods such as automobiles for the first time. Women were newly empowered by gaining the right to vote in 1919. Everything seemed like it was going great and people thought that the good times would never end. Okay, so I'm going to start talking about the presidents. So the 1920s started with Warren Harding, who served as president from 1921 to 1923. When researching for what Warren Harding is known for, the first thing that came up was he was known as one of the worst presidents of all time. When the Republican convention began in 1920, Harding was in last place on the initial vote of the delegates. However, the powerful men of the party got together and discussed who they thought could win. They decided on Harding, and he received the nomination. Many of the men smoked, and this type of politics, politics became known as smoke-filled room politics. Harding ran for presidency on the platform of return to normalcy. Voters liked this as they wanted things to be back to normal now that World War I was over. Harding won in a landslide and became the 29th president. Many of his friends that he appointed to his cabinet and administration turned out to be crooks who just wanted to use the government to make money. He realized this later when he said, I have no trouble with my enemies, my friends. They're the ones who keep me walking the floor at nights. Harding's administration came under attack for all sorts of scandals. The worst of the scandals was the teapot dome scandal. Warren died while serving as president in 1923 after only being president for a few years. Some interesting random facts about Warren are he was the first president to talk on the radio. He wore size 19 shoes, making his the largest feat of any president. And yes, size 19. He enjoyed playing poker and one time lost a set of White House China in a poker game. So go ahead and take any notes, important things that you heard, interesting things that you heard. Okay, so after Warren Harding died, Calvin Coolidge became president and served for the rest of the decade. Calvin Coolidge is known for cleaning up the mess left behind by President Harding. He's also famous for being a man of few words, earning him the nickname Silent Cat. Calvin Coolidge's quiet but honest personality seemed to be just what the country needed at the time. By cleaning up the scandals and showing support for businesses, the economy thrived. This period of prosperity became known as the Roaring Twenties. Question so far. Okay, so now that we talked about the presidents, we're going to move on to main events. So these are just some of the main things that happened in the 1920s are certainly not all of them. I'm just going to kind of touch on some of them. So, in August 1920, 
women were given the right to vote when the 19th Amendment to the United States Constitution grants universal women's suffrage. It is also known as the Susan B. Anthony Amendment in recognition for her campaign to win the right to vote. In January 16th, on January 16th, 1920, the Federal Volstead Act closed every tavern, bar, and saloon in the United States. From then on, it was illegal to sell any intoxication beverages with more than 0.5% alcohol. In January 1920, for the first time, the 1920 census indicated a population in the United States over 100 million people. So this was, um, there was a 15% increase since the last census. Um, the geographic center of the United States population still remained in Indiana. In May 1924, J. Edgar Hoover was appointed to lead the Federal Bureau of Investigation, known as the FBI. In June 1924, all Indians were designated citizens by legislation passed in the United States Congress and signed by President Calvin Coolidge. The Indian Citizenship Act granted this right to all Native Americans that had been born within the territory of the United States. In July 1924, the Scopes trial began and would later convict John T. Scopes of teaching Charles, Dar Charles Darwin's evolutionary theory at a Tennessee high school, which violated Tennessee law. He was fined $100 for the charge. In May 1927, Charles Lindbergh flew from New York on the first nonstop trans- Atlantic flight in history. He would reach Paris 33 and one half hours later in the spirit of St. Louis, his aircraft. Today, the flight from New York to Paris only takes seven hours. And here's a picture of Charles Lindenberg and his plane. was held in New York City after his return on June 13th. In October 1927, work on the gigantic sculpture at Mount Rushmore began. Has anyone in class been to Mount Rushmore? Some of you have. Has anyone heard of it before? Cool. So, it took 14 years to complete. And here is a picture of Mount Rushmore. Some of the more famous presidents had sculpted into. See George Washington, Abraham Lincoln. became the first woman to fly over the Atlantic Ocean. Here is Amelia, their plane. States Congress approved the construction of the Hoover Dam. Has anyone heard of the Hoover Dam before? Okay, good. So I'm going to show you a picture of it. This was um, when it was under construction. Here. 
29 in Chicago, Illinois, gangsters working for Al Capone killed seven rivals and citizens in the act known as the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. In October 1929, J.C. Penney opened its store, number 1,252 in Delaware, the last state of the United States at the time to have one of their stores. The growth of the nationwide chain indicated the prosperity of the, of the decade, but only two weeks later, the stock market crashed. In October 1929, post-war prosperity ended and the 1929 stock market crash. The plummeting stock prices led to losses between 1929 and 1931 of an estimated $50 billion and started the worst American depression in the United States nation's history. Okay, go on and take some notes. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the 1920s fashion and this um, had a lot of expansion, you could say, in the 1920s. So has anyone heard of um, flappers? Flapper women? Okay, so many of us have. So in the 1920s, flappers were a style of Western and the term flapper was invented to describe this so-called new breed. Initiated in the 1920s, the term flapper described women who flamboyantly flouted their contempt for what was back then deemed a societal behavior that was conventional. Flappers were women who were characterized by their choice of bobbed hair, short skirts, and their enjoyment of jazz music. They were branded as a brash for their enjoyment of casual sex, drinking, makeup, driving cars, and smoking. The origins of flappers ideologically were seen as being rooted in liberalism. So here are a picture of some women who were flappers. You can see their bobbed hair. You can see they're much more liberal with their outfits and this was one of the first turning points for women's fashion to really women to really start showing skin see that they're drinking, which was something new for that decade, kind of becoming their own people, which was not seen before the flappers. it was fashionable to wear a different outfit for the day, afternoon, and evening. Women would change clothes several times a day. The hemline indicated which outfit was for which time of the day. Could you imagine how big women's closets must have to be for all their clothes to fit when they put on three outfits per day? Raise your hand if you've heard of Coco Chanel. Our Chanel brand. Okay, so Coco Chanel was a major contributor to the Harlem Renaissance. And here is Coco Chanel. And she was a fashion designer who set the trends for this era. Because the war had ended, people wanted to start over and make something of themselves. And Chanel um, helped these people achieve their goals by allowing them to express themselves through her fashion. Chanel was aware of the women's desire to be beautiful and used this concept to design her clothes. 
The 1920s is the decade in which fashion entered the modern era. You can see a lot of the women and how they dressed. Their hair was in bobs and they wore hats. Men also abandoned abandoned highly formal daily attire and even began to wear athletic clothing for the first time. The suits men wear today are still based, for the most part, on those worn in the 1920s. Let's go ahead and take some notes on fashion. And does anyone have any questions so far? Okay, so now we're talk about music and movies and remember that the 1920s was really a time of expansion of culture so there was a lot of progression with music and movies Um, on october 6 1927 the jazz singer premieres and here is this is al jolson's the jazz singer and this was the first talking motion picture premieres and it was marking the beginning of the end of the silent film era. So prior to this movie, movies were all silent pictures. So this was the very first movie that had talking in it. also gave young people the freedom to go where they pleased and to do what they wanted. What many young people wanted to do was dance. The Charleston, the Cakewalk, the Black Bottom, the Flea Hop were all popular dances. Jazz bands played at dance halls like the Savoy in New York City and the Oregon in Chicago. Radio stations and phonograph records carried their tunes to listeners across the nation. A hundred million phonographs were sold in 1927 alone, which is crazy since the population was only about 100 million. And here is a picture of the phonogram. objected to jazz music's vulgarity and depravity, but many in the younger generation loved the freedom they felt on the dance floor. Let's go ahead and take some notes, and then we'll talk about sports next. Okay, so now let's move on to sports. In September 1920, the American Professional Football League is formed with only 11 teams. Jim Thorpe served as its president. And the league would change its name to the National Football League in 1922. It started in 1920, and now the NFL is the United States' most popular sport. In October 1920, Baseball's World Series was broadcast on radio for the first time. The New York Giants defeat the New York Yankees, five games to three. In May 1922, construction began on Yankee Stadium in New York City, often dubbed the house that built, that Ruth built. In January 1924, the first Winter Olympic Games were held in the French Alps in France, with 16 nations sending athletes to participate, including the United States, which won four medals. In 1927, Babe Ruth hit 60 home runs in a single season. That record stood for more than 
30 years. Babe Ruth was the most famous athlete in the 1920s. Okay, so gonna take some notes. If you have any questions, raise your hand. Okay, so now we're going to talk about some of the more famous inventions from 1920s. Um, so radio vision, the television, sliced bread, bubble gum, Mickey Mouse, penicillin, Oxford English Dictionary were some of the more famous inventions of the 1920s. Okay, so that is all the information that I have to share with you about the 1920s. If you have any other interesting facts, feel free to share them. Um, but right now, it's time for our pop quiz. So take out a piece of paper, write numbers 1 through 10, write your name on it, and see how you do. Okay, so... Right, number 1, what is the nickname for the 1920s? Number two, who became president after Warren Harding? Number three, what is the name of the act that closed all bars and places where they served alcohol? Number four, what amount was the U.S. population closest to? 50 million, 100 million, or 200 million? Number five, when was the Hoover Dam built? Number six, when did construction on Mount Rushmore begin? Number seven, how many outfits would women wear a day? Number eight, what was unique about the movie Jazz Singer? This movie. Number nine, name one of the popular dance moves of the 1920s. Number 10, who was one of the most famous baseball players of the 1920s? Okay, so does anyone need, need me to repeat any questions? Yes. Number 1, what is the nickname for the 1920s? Any others? Yes. Number five. When was the Hoover Dam built? Any others? Are you sure? Okay. So I'm going to go over the answers now. Please check your work. To number one, what is the nickname for the 1920s? The Roaring 20s. Number two, who became president after Warren Harding? Calvin Coolidge. Number three, what is the name of the act that closed all bars and places where they served alcohol? The Volstead Act. Number four, what amount was the U.S. population closest to? 50 million a hundred million or two hundred million was a hundred million. Number five, when was the Hoover Dam built? It was built in 1928. Number six, when did construction on Mount Rushmore begin? In 1927. Number seven, 
how many outfits would women wear each day? They would wear around three different outfits. Number eight. What was unique about the movie The Jazz Singer? It was a talking movie. Number nine. Name one of the popular dance moves on the 1920s. So you could have said the Charleston, the Cakewalk, the Black Bottom, the Flea Hop. Any of those would have worked. And number 10, who was um, a famous baseball player in the 1920s? And you should have said Babe Ruth. So go ahead and grade your quizzes. Um, let me know how you did. And you may turn in your papers. Um, I hope you have a restful sleep. Good night.